Welcome to another video uh, from the Kerosene Lab at TEP. What this one's going to be about today is I watch YouTube videos just like you guys do. And there's some people that are talking about these uh, 22,000 BTU round uh, kerosene heaters. I don't think they really truly understand them. Uh, there, there's some bad information out there and some of the ways they're going about it I feel is wrong. So this is going to be the first in a series of three videos of my opinions on uh, several things to do with kerosene and prepping. Um, now you might wonder, how can I give a, an opinion? Well, I am kind of an expert on kerosene. I heat with it. I heat my water with it. I cook with it. I light with it. I've done this for 15 years. I have designed my own lamps. Uh, I kind of know what I'm doing. So what you see in front of you is a, uh, an American Wick AWHC 2230. It's from 1998. We bought it during the big uh, northeast ice storm of 98. And as you can see, it's still in very good shape. And I'm going to explain a few things about how to keep it in good shape and how to, uh, to improve its performance. Now, the one thing is when you're looking to buy a, <clears throat> a round kerosene heater such as this, you really should look for one that the wicks are unpinned. The thing is, if you buy a unit that is pinned, if the wick burns a little crooked and you trim it, you can't turn the wick up any higher because of the pins. If you have a uh, just a plain sock wick, you can take the unit apart, pull the wick up, make it level, and continue to run it. The original wick that was in the one you see here I burned it, I think, four times and, and raised it four times. And I got down to the point that I was into the orange reinforcing. I had burnt that much of it. And it still burnt just fine. And I could continue to raise the, uh, the wick uh, as high as I needed. Of course, it, didn't, it wasn't setting on the bottom anymore. You had to keep more fuel in it. But in my opinion... For what it's worth, you should consider buying a unit that has uh, no pins. Okay, right here is, this is from uh, Miles Stair. It's a wick number eight. And these are all the models that are unpinned, that are just using a sock. And I would recommend, if you're going to buy one, to get one, one of these. There may be newer models and, the, and it's not exactly uh, the same uh, uh, model number, but you should be able to look it up by going to milestair.com and go ahead and choose a unit that is unpinned. Okay, now one of the things that, uh, that bothers me is I watch people start these with uh, batteries the battery igniter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You gotta have quite good batteries and a very clean wick. If you don't have both, it may not start. I see them using lighters. You don't use lighters. You don't use matches. I mean, matches will work, but the reason why we got this heater initially is we were without power for 42 days in uh, 98. How many matches do you need in 42 days? Oh, and by the way, the roads were closed for half that time with uh, trees down. So let me show you how I would light it. And I would use one of these uh, uh, butane uh, lighters. This is a uh, burns matic You buy it at uh, uh, Home Depot in the uh, welding section. Just turn it up open the door, raise the uh, chimney, click
click it on, go in, bang, it's lit. Guys, it doesn't get any easier than that. Okay, guys, I want you to look at the temperature right there. It's over 200 degrees, and the, the heat from this unit is going straight up. Is there any heat right here? Not really. Okay, like I said, there's no heat really coming out of the side of this thing. There you go. It's 53 degrees. You're not really heating up a room. What you're doing is you're sending the heat to the ceiling, and then when the ceiling's warm, it is slowly bringing the heat level, the thermal lever level down, but the floor will always be cold. You walk into a room with one of these heaters, and generally, you're going to find from the waist up, it's very warm. From the waist down, it's cold. Now, I have seen some people put uh, uh, wood stove thermoelectric fans on. They, they do blow a little air, but not much. And a kerosene heater can get hotter than a wood stove. And uh, they have, there have been reports of them going bad. So what I have done, and I know they're expensive, and I don't want to hear about it that they're expensive, but they work, is you buy a military surplus thermoelectric fan from uh, Aspen Systems. I'm going to start the timer. Right there, we're going to start the timer, see how long it takes to get going. It has a, uh, it converts heat to electricity, just like the little ones do, and it has a 12 inch fan and it blows 400 cubic feet per minute and the, the thing I like about it is it will now it's just beginning to try to turn right now very slowly she's beginning and that was about 45 seconds You can't see from the uh, uh, from the camera just how fast the blade is turning. It's turning a whole lot faster than what the camera is showing. So let's take a quick look at what our temperature is. 113 degrees, 114 degrees, where before it was 50, give or take. Now I had to move it at an angle because what you're getting is the heat is coming out at an angle and putting it down below it's it's in a dead airspace so I've had to move it a little bit you know to get a good reading for you okay let's see how much heat is coming out of the top of the fan 62 degrees they went from 200 to 62 degrees and all the heat is now being blown onto the floor now what's going to happen is you walk into a room with one of these heaters and a, a kettle fan. From the waist down, it will be far warmer than the waist up. And that's what you want because heat normally rises. Without the fan, all the heat goes to the ceiling and you're trying to push the heat. You're trying to displace the cold on the floor and it doesn't work as well. In fact, that this heater with the fan is nearly equal to two heaters. And if you're wondering what happens when you shut the heater off, it continues to run, extracting all the residual heat from the uh, heater and push it onto the floor until the heater has cooled down to the point that uh, it can't sustain uh, any electricity anymore in its uh, uh, to run the motor. While that is spinning down, there's a couple other things uh, maintenance-wise. If you're running these heaters 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can run them at night, just open a window one inch to give you fresh air. Uh, that's what Perfection uh, recommended. 120 years ago, it still works today. 
you get some fresh air in, and also you don't have to worry that much about carbon monoxide because kerosene doesn't put out near the carbon monoxide that uh, propane and natural gas does. In fact, I, I did a test once where I put uh, a heater in a enclosed room and I had a CO meter and what happened was it had used up all the oxygen to the point that it was throwing carbon strings into the air and the CO was only 109 which is not enough to trip a CO meter so you don't have to worry about CO you have to worry about oxygen which means you have to keep the window open so anyway as far as maintenance uh, if you run it 24 hours a day seven days a week on the seventh day use one of these you know what those are a uh, kerosene sucker or filler suck all the fuel out start it up and run it and when it starts to run out of fuel and chuff take it outside and let it burn out that cleans the wick and you are then good for another week if you just continue to run it it's going to get hard to start it's going to smell it uh, it won't uh, the flames won't be as high you won't produce as much heat and I assume you guys know you got to use water clear kerosene don't use the pink stuff although you can run it but it runs a whole lot better on, on clear but these uh, fiberglass wicks unlike the cotton wicks in a perfection you can run pink but I don't I run uh, water clear and it doesn't hurt to uh, strain it for water with a, a, a Mr. Funnel you can get those from Miles Stair so anyway guys this is what I know about kerosene heaters what I've learned over the years and a lot of this information has not been put out there um, there's they're safe uh, I don't think there's ever been a documented case of a kerosene heater causing a fire people run into them people set things on them people put them too close to drapes it's generally the person the operators fault they put gasoline in them by using an old gas can to go get kerosene at, at, at the gas station you don't do that all that tends to do is weed out the dumb ones well I hope uh, you guys learned something from this video um, I just I felt it, it had to be done because I've seen so many videos that the people don't know what they're doing not that I'm an absolute expert but I've got a I've got decades of experience and I've tested this stuff here in the lab and I know it works um, I guess one thing I could do is get a close-up of that for you in case you wanted to look it up okay if if you like it if you like the video there'll be a couple more with my opinions on things if you don't and I pissed you off sorry I believe that everything I said is correct and I, I've got data to back it up and prove it Till the next video, goodbye.